I'm Dr. Steve Byer, the Astronomy Genie, your guide to the universe. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Byer, the Astronomy Genie. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at a solution to the first of the five vexations that I indicated trouble first-time telescope users. And that is, of course, aiming at something in the night sky. If you can't see anything up there, then all the other issues uh, fall by the wayside. So we're going to today begin by using this Celestron 80 millimeter uh, diameter uh, objective refracting telescope a little over three uh, inches across and we're going to have it mounted on an alt azimuth uh, device which means it can turn sideways left and right and it can go up and down and with those two motions we'll be able to target something in the night sky or on the ground in this boot camp we're going to have you out looking in the daylight because it becomes five times more difficult to find something with a telescope at night uh, where you're not familiar, first of all, with perhaps some of the controls and moving around. So to begin with, I suggest getting a comfortable chair, even though I'm standing right now, and bring the telescope right next to you and play around with it for about 15 minutes and get a feel for how it turns, how it moves uh, sideways. You can unlock it. And in this scope, it moves very easily left and right and it stays put, it doesn't just keep on drifting. As far as going up and down, there are three controls. On each side there is a, uh, a knob, and then there is a bar, which uh, helps substantiate the aim. And when I'm trying this one, it goes up very nicely, as long as the uh, controls are loosened enough, goes nice and smooth and stays put. But let's say I aimed at the moon, I went a little bit too high, can't see anything in the uh, eyepiece, and I put it down and now I've aimed at the moon and I tighten it, but uh, if it was not secure, it would just drop, drop uh, the eyepiece down and it'd be out of the direction again. So you have to make sure you know when to tighten this, as opposed to the left and right where it stays put. With this, if you aim, uh, by after dropping it, it will just pop up and you'll be annoyed. So you don't want that to happen. So after some time indoors, getting a good up close and personal feel for the instrument and how it moves and how you can lock it in position, then I suggest you go out to an open area where you have perhaps a uh, 100 feet of direction free around you and get a hold previously of a ball bearing. Hardware store or online, a uh, quarter of inch will do nicely, a nice shiny new ball bearing on a sunny day and place it perhaps uh, on a rock top of a surface in the distance so that you have the sun at your back and the ball bearing in front of you. And then use the telescope to aim for it. First of all, look along the side of the tube. In this case, the front um, cylinder is larger. This is so-called dew, dew cap. And I can put my finger in this far before I reach, didn't put my finger on the lens, but this is to prevent condensation at night from clouding the lens. You go out and all of a sudden the lens is all uh, clouded. This will help prevent that. But it's wider than the rest of the tube. So just look along the side of the tube. Let's say you're aiming at the, the ball bearing. Look along here. And then the next step, you might say, okay, now he's going to the finder. Finders can be sometimes more difficult to set up than the main telescope. So a trick I learned uh, with my first uh, three and a half inch reflector as a kid, uh, which didn't have a finder, was simply look into the eyepiece holder without the eyepiece. The eyepiece is down here already, but in this case, uh, look in directly your eye about that far away until you see a, a red, a, a round circle. And that would be the uh, objective lens or a mirror if you have a reflecting telescope. And then just pull your eye back uh, slowly about a foot or so and then the image will be uh, in focus. So you're using the telescope actually as its own finder. 
And even now, sometimes I just ignore the finder and just go directly to this quickly. I see what I'm uh, aiming at through the eyepiece and then drop this uh, through without the eyepiece and then use your lowest finder, uh, your lowest power eyepiece. In this case, it's a 20 millimeter and put that into its position. Uh, this focal length of the telescope is 400 millimeters. So to get the magnification, you divide the 400 by 20, and this will uh, magnify 20 times. And if you did a good job looking through without the eyepiece, then it should be a fairly simple task to focus. Uh, if your target is less than infinity, uh, let's say you don't have 100 feet away, 50 feet, then you will have to pull this back out further than it would if you're looking at the moon for the focal uh, length adjustment. And that will be how you set up the eyepiece. And then if everything's nice and set, you can uh, go to a higher power eyepiece. So this uh, one uh, is a uh, four millimeter and that will magnify a hundred times given the focal length of the telescope. And I don't recommend, some will uh, perhaps press it more, but I wouldn't recommend uh, more magnification, much more than the uh, number of millimeters of the objective lens. So in the case this is an 80, uh, 100 power, okay, but not much more than that. Otherwise it would be simply uh, getting more blurry and also it will uh, wiggle more and uh, it will be not as pleasant to look at as a lower power. So for many cases, the lowest power is the best. And uh, the Aldazimus mounting is what all the large telescopes uh, now for the past 30 years have because they're motorized control. And with um, automatic telescope pi uh, pointers today, most of them, you still have to aim at one or two objects to begin on a nice run to calibrate it. And then the computer can take over. So this method uh, without the eyepiece is what I find very helpful, useful, and quick. And uh, after you have looked at the ball bearing more or less horizontally, you might want to move it to a different uh, site, maybe in a niche of a tree, so you can still see the glint off the, uh, the ball bearing. Maybe if you have a companion with you, they could hide it somewhere in the distance and then give you clues so you uh, pretend you're star hopping and say, well, look for the rock and then go to the right of the rock and you'll see a, uh, a tree, a large um, trunk tree, and then keep going and you'll find another rock and that's where the ball bearing would be. So it'll give you a little practice manipulating the scope. And of course, you would at night be looking at things in the night sky. So then uh, I would suggest you start looking at some treetops and if you have a pine tree, a nice pointed tip to that, a very distinct, discreet object, tilt the telescope again, look along the tube without the eyepiece, get it in place and get it centered. And once you have uh, worked on that, in fact, even with the ball bearing, then you can go back and adjust your finder so that the uh, ball bearing would be right in the crosshairs. And after a while, you could even dispense with the eyepiece uh, uh, less looking through the tube, but actually I, I still do that more often than using my finder. And uh, with that I think you'll go out at night and have a much more pleasant experience setting up your scope and really enjoying it, looking at the night sky and all the wonders that it has for you with your new telescope. To summarize our three-part telescope aiming boot camp, number one, get comfortable in a chair and have your telescope next to you, play around with the motions, the axis up and down, left, right, see if there's any backlash in the motions that uh, wiggle when you think you've had it tied down and aiming at something so you can compensate when you're outside. Uh, part two, get a ball bearing on a sunny day with the uh, sun at your back, place the ball about 100 feet away so that you can now look for the glint. Aim the telescope along the side of the tube and then with the eyepiece out, look in and center it uh, with your uh, eye about uh, six inches to a foot away from the eyepiece holder. You'll see a uh, direct view using your telescope as its own finder. And then once that's in place, 
put the eyepiece in, lower power eyepiece, uh, 20 millimeters, 25 millimeters, and focus. And then, last but not least, you can center the uh, crosshairs on your finder. And final part, aim at something up in the sky, again, during the daytime. Uh, perhaps the corner of a building, left corner, right corner, uh, some discrete point, uh, the top of a pine tree, such as we're showing in this uh, demonstration. And just practice, repeat it, do it on several days, and you'll be much happier with your telescope and being able to enjoy it for the purpose that uh, it was designed and you got it for. This is the Astronomy Genie signing off. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, Click the notification button, and in the comments, send me your questions. I'd love to hear what you have to say.